All right, so I'm going to walk through the process of how you will go about installing um, Mark Edit 7.7 onto a Mac. A couple caveats, it's gonna use Wine, so we're gonna use Brew to install Wine. Um, that's all you're gonna need to do, so unlike the previous version of Mark Edit, which was natively built for a Mac and there were a handful of um, uh, things specifically around Z390 50 you had to install, um, this will take care of um, the process. So I'm going to assume you have brew installed. So we're going to go ahead and walk through the process. So it's brew install, cask, no quarantine, and then wine at DEVL. And I'll document the, the specific commands. The reason we use wine, D, the, this particular version of wine, is because we need um, it to be uh, the version number to be greater than um, 9.1 and the um, if you just install wine it installs at 9.0 something and so there's some drawing issues with it if you go to uh, wine dev uh, develop then you end up getting 9.25 which gives me everything that I need so we'll go ahead and run that um, so let's go, go ahead and it's going to download um, the stuff install it. As you can see here it's uh, pulling down um, 9.2 is what it's picking up. So it goes ahead and it's installing. You can see gatekeeper has been disabled for this cask which is what we want. That's why we set it to no quarantine. So while it's doing that let's go ahead and download the version of Mark Edit. So I will have a link. Right now I'm put up um, on the anonymous This is for testing. So we'll download a package. It's about 220 megabytes. All right, so that's been done. Let's see if Wine's been installed. And it has been. All right, so we will push those away. Um, when you install, try and install this, you're going to get a moat here because it's coming from the internet. So you'll probably have to go here um, to privacy and security and tell it that it's okay to install that anyway. And that'll pull up the installer. Go ahead and this will get through. All right, so that's done. All right, so the very first time we run wine, there's going to be some things that it's going to do because it has to set up the environment. So we're going to go to here. There's the application. You'll also find it in your applications directory. That's where it's installing it. So let's click on it. And so it's going to do stuff. So right here, it's the first time it's running wine, so it's going to tell it's going to configure some things. You should not have to go to the privacy area to authorize anything, but just in case, if it doesn't start, you might want to check the privacy and settings. You may find a note saying that you need to authorize it to work. So this is going to be like Mark Edit 7 on the Windows version. So you can go through the steps or just tell it to use the default settings. That's what I'm going to do here. And so now Mark Edit 7, 5, 7, 7. So this is the Windows version is running just like it would run on um, uh, Windows. The only caveats being that the pieces that don't work right now, and I'm going to have to essentially have Mac equivalents to these. So Mark Edit uses um, uh, Edge as an internal web browser for services like the Ask Mabel, which would have a web uh, page rendering right here, um, as well as to facilitate in the Z39.50 um, finding servers. There's a service that I use from Index Data that you can search and then add them automatically. That browser's not there, but otherwise everything else is working. So like in this case, we'll add a Z39.50 server. So we need to get the criteria, so I'm going to grab the Library of Congresses, U.S. Library of Congress, C39.50 server settings. So we'll get the gateway settings here, and we can just uh, go ahead and add those. Uh, 
Uh, one thing you'll notice is if you look down here, you'll see there's two icons. Um, this is because the way that um, this has to work is that uh, mark edit is there's I created a small shell application that acts as kind of the go between between wine and the application so it's going to open um, with that icon uh, you'll see that icon there it's it's actually this is the wine host right here right here and then this is mark edit itself so if you close this it'll close the application because it'll shut wine down so just don't worry about it lcdb 210 i'll see if there's a way to clean that up later so there's that save so from there we'll just select the database and we can just download it like we would any other application you'll see that the window here is kind of wonky so again we're using wine so it treats it like windows um, the uh, the files are um, for these because it uses a, there's a, a virtualized Windows file system here. It'll give you a Z drive, um, but it's really just your mounted drive. So we'll just go ahead and save it to the desktop. Um, so that way you can see it show up and how it works. So um, so you can see it's right here. So right now um, I'm just going to tell you. So it's kind of quirky. I don't have the um, icons showing up here yet. It's uh, I haven't quite figured out how to get those to pop up yet. But I have, just to close this so you can see, um, it is associated with the application. So if you click on these, it'll go ahead and open Mark Edit up. If you have um, an older version of Mark Edit installed, when you install this version, it will point the default to this version. Um, and the icons and stuff will stay there if you've already got them there. But right now, the icons aren't there. If I can sort it out between now and when I post this video, um, hopefully they'll show up. But um, at this point, all of the associations are working with the application. And you'll see here the way that, that um, like I said, the, uh, the in Wine, it's remapped um, for internal purposes. It shows it as a Z drive. Um, but you can go ahead and execute it. You can see it shows up here. So um, we can close this and um, it should open that into the editor. So um, for the most part, everything should be working. I have not tested everything, so I will continue to keep working on it, but I'm gonna make this available for folks um, who are using Mark Edit and who wanna work with a, a newer version because this works with all of the, the current functionality um, and you should at this point be able to just um, go in and work with it so you need to change settings settings are there you can update the settings the integration APIs all that good stuff um, if you need to see like where data is being stored again this thing kicks you over so you can see it inside so this treats it like a virtualized um, uh, Windows uh, 10 instance, so you'll see that there. And in fact, if you um, check the system information, you'll see that uh, uh, it believes that it's Windows 10 Pro. That's what Wine is um, is telling Mark Edit that it is. So when it emulates, but you can see it's using .NET Core 8. Um, everything's been targeted, so it should be working uh, pretty well. So I think that's that's going to be kind of. For now, the pathway that we go forward in terms of supporting Mac, um, I'm probably gonna go ahead and create a Wine version. Uh, there's already instructions, but I'll, I'll clean them up for the Linux side. So if anybody wants to use Linux and the, the interface, same approach will work. Um, but this is kind of how it's gonna, this is kind of how I'll go forward. Um, I will be looking at um, uh, updating the tool here at some point in the near future, um, utilizing, uh, the um, there's a unified framework Microsoft has one there's a couple third-party ones I'm kind of evaluating which one makes the most sense uh, mark edits a fairly complicated application so uh, kind of sorting through what makes the most sense for that process but this should be this will help going forward and unifies the code base so it's the same because of wine and the way and the the, the way that wine works um, it will facilitate being able to use the same application um, across all of the different platforms. And like I said, I will work on some replacements for these kind of things here where there are basically three windows where this shows up. None of them are core to the application, but it would be nice if they worked. 
Um, so hopefully that will get us forward. I intend to post updates um, on December 21st. Um, so uh, hopefully, if like I said, if I can clean this part up, I will. Otherwise, this is what it's going to look like when you start using the application. If you have questions, let me know.